The Prince represents every single thing wrong with adult animation. Just jumping right into this one. The Prince is an adult animated sitcom created by Gary Gennetti for HBO Max that stars a caricature of the royal family going about their business doing royal family things. It's very bad. That looks deep. Get the medic! I'm on break, bruh. You know, oh, I think this playdate is a big success. I initially wasn't even going to bother checking the show out. I knew I wasn't going to enjoy it, so what's the point? You basically get all you need to know from just watching the trailer. This might be the smallest palace I've ever been in. Well, it's an apartment. Yes, an apartment palace, I know that. <laughs> but I decided to go ahead and watch through the entire series anyway. Why is that? I was bored. And honestly, I'm glad I went and sat through all of it. Because The Prince is genuinely one of the worst cartoons I have ever had the displeasure of sitting through. At least with a show like Hoops, it manages to have the plus of... Having a story... Has characters who I get to know... Shouldn't be a plus, but after sitting through this abomination, I gotta hand it to Hoops. Clearly someone on that team tried a little bit. Rather than just sitting here and shitting on this show endlessly, however, I think I'm also going to use this opportunity to discuss the broader topic of adult animation as a whole, and just what's currently wrong with it. Don't worry though, I will still shit on the prince, because like I said at the beginning, it represents everything wrong with adult animation. Plus, I sat through the whole fucking thing and made a whole list of pages to bitch about. You bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna complain. So, the prince. Where do I begin? It's hard to describe what the plot of this show is, because there's genuinely none to speak of. I have never seen a show in my life that's quite as lazy as this in terms of its story structure. A majority of the episodes don't even have a plot. You might think that's okay for it to not have a story, considering it's simply meant to be a parody of the royal family, but there is no parody here! There's no real commentary on anything. The whole setup is... But, wh what if the royal family w were mean? And you're just watching that basic concept play out on screen. It rhymed. Let me use an example. So the prince tries to have ongoing storylines throughout each of the episodes. Little character arcs that slowly develop and eventually... Ahem... <clears throat> pay off. You can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes. But in a show of like 10 main characters, none of them get the time to actually properly develop. You'd be lucky if a character even gets 15 seconds dedicated to them in an episode. Like this kid, for example. He's front and center on the poster, and I shit you not, he has maybe 40 seconds of total screen time in the entire series. I don't even know whose kid he is, he just occasionally pops up. And because we're constantly shifting gears from character to character, it means that each singular episode never manages to get off the grind and tell its own story. To me, the best type of story-driven cartoons is one where, while yes, characters do change and develop over time, each episode still manages to have its own story in some way. But it's like with The Prince, they had no idea which approach they wanted to take, because each episode does have its own unique setup, but that's all it remains as. A setup. There's an episode where the family go on a vacation, uh, the episode's called Vacation, but in the UK we call those a holiday. Ah, checkmate, Americans. But then they all just sit around talking about the same shit they do in every other fucking episode. The characters going on holiday doesn't constitute as a plot in and of itself. You actually need to do something with that. Even when they do attempt this, they fall flat in their face. They're trying desperately to cover everything they can in an episode, so it comes off like there were no actual scripts and we're just seeing the plot overview. Maybe you don't have every single character appear in every single episode. That saves some time. These two characters get brand new jobs, and they need to keep those because they're struggling for money. What happens in the next scene? They have lost the jobs off screen. How was your birthday? I was fired. Why? Because we need to get past that plot point and move on to the next. But what's the point in even bringing it up in the first place if you aren't going to attempt to do anything funny with it? Maybe have a scene where they're working that job and failing at it? No, just, just cut to them being fired, cool. What about the episode where Prince George enters the science fair? What funny stuff could happen in that scenario? He tells the butler to do it for him, then he wins. Then the episode ends. Hooray! Like, I'm not fucking joking, look, this is literally the ending to the episode. This is it? That's a fucking particle accelerator. What is the joke? 
they completely fall flat in their face because the show never takes a fucking break. Characters are constantly talking just to get on to the next scene. But when the next scene is also desperately trying to get a move on, you just start to phase out and stop paying attention to a single thing that's going on. They do this dumbass thing with Prince George's sister, where for like the first eight episodes she gets one five second scene, each where she's talking on the phone and George says, Oi oi, who are you talking to? Nobody. Okay, is this supposed to intrigue me? You're doing the same thing each and every time, just get on with it. I never got an actual introduction to this character, so I'm out of care about what's going on with her. I don't give a shit if she betrays Prince George. I don't even know who Prince George is. It's genuinely embarrassing to see them attempt to tell a proper story. There's a three-parter called School Musical, and it is one of the worst attempts at having a story I have ever seen. You'd think in a show where each episode leads into the next, you'd want to make sure that if you're labeling something specifically as a three-parter, then you'd have it be more of a standalone story. But no! Within the three-parter, they continue plot points that were started outside of the three-parter. Why the fuck did you go out of your way to label it as such? All it does is point out your shitty story structure! It's all building up to this epic school musical. You'd think this is leading to Prince George's demise, where he's gonna realize that he isn't hot shit and bombs on stage. Oh boy, can't wait to see this train wreck. I look, 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 look. Why, in a three-parter called School Musical, would you completely skip past the school musical that you have been building up? for three fucking episodes. What was the point in any of this if it serves no consequences? This video may seem like I'm being all over the place, because that's the exact feeling I got while watching the show. There is seriously no proper way of me getting across just how awful a pacing is, so why don't I instead talk about how awful the characters are? Each character in the show has exactly one joke that they tell over, and over, and over again. Prince George is Stewie. He is literally Stewie down to the voice and everything. I made a video a couple years back where I asked a guy on Twitter to do a Stewie impression for me, and what do you know, it sounds exactly like Prince George. Uh, you're, you're my friend now. I, I guess you're not so bad. Gangan, Gan, you look so beautiful today. I don't know why they didn't cast Angelina Jolie to play you in The Crown. I don't know why they couldn't simply just get British people to write and voice act in this show, because it comes off as so tryhard in replicating British dialogue. Americans cannot write British humor, plain and simple. And the creator of this show, who voices Prince George, isn't capable of doing a British accent. Just listen to the way he pronounces his O's and S. You can hear the American trying to crawl out of him. It's painful to listen to. Olivia Rogers. Roger, Roger, Roger. Rogers. Anyways, yeah. Every character in this show repeats the same joke for 12 episodes straight. Every episode has the exact same setups and punchlines. Characters are all sitting around the table eating. Prince Charles says something to the Queen. She scolds him. He yells at his wife in response. Close up shot of him apologizing to his wife. They tell that same joke like five times. But you know what? I can at the very least acknowledge that these were indeed jokes. Half the time they don't even do that. Hey, shut up. You shut up. <laughs> yeah, you look amazing today, Gampa. What do you mean? What are you adding on to? You're finishing the sentence from like a minute ago. Why did you feel the need to finish it? It's not an addition to the joke. I just don't see the appeal anymore in a show where every character is just an asshole 24 seven. Why am I to root for any of these people? It ends on this big cliffhanger where they're about to get poisoned, but I don't care if they're poisoned. I do not give a fucking shit. At least in other shows where there's a ton of assholes, they get their comeuppance every now and then to balance it out. But here it's just 12 episodes of rich assholes being rich assholes. Coincidentally, the only characters in this show I actually liked were the royal family servants, the gay couple especially. Hmm, I wonder if it's because we're actually told a little bit of their backstory. We learn about their once in life and see how miserable their job is. Hmm, I wonder. The best episode of this show by far is the one where Prince George's butler gets a day off, and we just see him going about his everyday life. Not only do we finally get to see a bit more of this world outside the palace, but we also get to follow a character who isn't a massive cunt. Couldn't have it all be good though, we still have George interrupting every single scene to tell some shitty joke. The comedy is some of the most confusing shit I've ever seen in a cartoon. Half the time I can't even tell if they're attempting to tell jokes. A majority of them just fall under saying a celebrity name or TV show. Huh, neat. Demi Lovato is non-binary. Good for them. Oh look, you got it open! What is the joke? It just interrupts the scene for that. Alright, you can go. You just hit me with your hat. Hello? Joke, are you there? We all need time off. How's Paddington 2? 
Excellent. <laughs> All right, that one was okay. I've been thinking maybe it's time to step down and let Charles ascend the throne. What do you think? Well, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, we're moving on. I feel like it's fairly self-explanatory just why the animation of this show looks so bad, but I figured I'd go over it anyways, because it leads into the next point about the studio who animated the show. It looks like the Mr. Bean cartoon. For my first positive of the video, I do have to give credit where it's due. Most of the backgrounds here are pretty frickin' nice. Especially the ones outside. The interior ones are just alright. Good thing that's where a majority of the show takes place. But if you're wondering why the prince looks the exact same as Paradise PD and Brickleberry, well, it's because it was animated by the same studio, Bento Box. Now, I am of the belief that rigged shows can look amazing, even better than a lot of frame-by-frame -frame ones by television standards. It all depends on how you use it. Just look at shows like Hilda, The Lighthouse, or anything done by Mercury, really. The issue a lot of these adult shows have is that it's all just really slow and stiff. There's no secondary animation to speak of. Characters take forever to get from one position to another, which gives it this awful tweened look that could easily be disguised by simply making the movements faster. Use less in-betweens. I love the look of shows like The Loud House, because the posing is so strong, matched with really quick movements, it gives everything such an impact. But in The Prince, all the characters just stand around completely still, waiting for their next cue. Everything and everyone is just so lifeless. Since most of the characters spend entire scenes either sitting down or standing, I don't even feel as if it's necessary to look at the screen half the time. And why is that? Do the animators just not care? Jeez, animators, get it together. Well, that would be the scapegoat answer, wouldn't it? But the problem actually lies much deeper. Working on adult animation is awful. From what I've heard at least, I have no experience in it. But from what I've heard around the grapevine, along with people who worked on The Prince giving their own anecdotes about how hard it was working on the show, it really just comes down to this. They gotta produce a lot of work in a very short time frame, and if they're unable to produce that work, then they're fired. This sadly seems to be pretty common nowadays. But it's why I don't blame any of the animators for why these shows look the way they do. Not only are you in constant fear of being let off, not only do you have to animate a ton of shit with extremely strict deadlines, but you also aren't even paid very well for all the time you're putting in. Isn't the world of animation wonderful, kids? So yeah, that's what annoys me more than anything actually in the show itself. Treat your animators with some fucking respect, bro. There's a reason why all these dog shit shows only manage to last one or two seasons, and it's because they're not being handled with the care or respect to make them any good. And it doesn't seem like the industry is changing anytime soon, with that new Chicago Party Ant show coming out that blocks everyone on Twitter who makes fun of it. What is the main issue currently with adult animation? Well, I've asked around to get opinions from everyone I could, and it seems to be the issue that plagues all of animation if you ask me. There's gotta be some sort of mandate out there for some reason that requires every single adult cartoon to be a comedy. It's not a problem for me, I love comedies, but variety is the spice of life, and sometimes it'd be cool to see more actions or dramas or whatever. Even shows I would consider good are brought down by this requirement. I enjoyed Bojack Horseman a ton, but that show never once managed to make me laugh. I cringed at more of the humour. F is for Family is one of my favourite adult cartoons period, because of its realistic portrayal of a nuclear family. You really begin to care about characters like Frank, because he's constantly trying to fulfil society's expectations of being a man by attempting to provide for his family. But that show has some of the worst humour I have ever seen. It is terrible. It's something I mentioned in my Hoops video, but so many adult cartoons these days are made by random comedians with no experience of animation, and not actual creators who have a vision. Meaning that platforms probably demanded that they replicate the style of what's popular at the time, which is why we get so many Family Guy and Rick and Morty ripoffs. And because the comedian doesn't really care much about animation, they just go with it. But those shows didn't get popular from copying someone else. Okay, well there's a case to be made about Family Guy. But that series got more popular when it started to stray away from being like The Simpsons and embraced its wackier humour. But yeah, that's all that really needs to be said. Just let creators make what they want to make. That's how you'll get your next South Park or Rick and Morty. So yeah, The Prince sucks and you shouldn't watch it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go and make my daily prayer to God to thank him for the fact that I'm not British. 